Hey, hey, Ron. Yeah? Why didn't you say it the first time I said hey, hey, Ron? Because it's pronounced Aaron. You done messed up, hey, hey, Ron! AA runs right here, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining me for a bit more SPTV, where every day is a great day not to be in a cult. It's not me who done messed up. Thank God, you guys. The world is still talking about Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis's horribly executed uh, attempt at an apology video for submitting letters to the judge defending the character of Daniel Masterson. Convicted serial rapist and Scientologist in good standing, Daniel Masterson. And they weren't just letters like, please, for the sake of our friend's daughter, only give him 15 years instead 15 to life instead of 30 to life. The letters were like, Daniel Masterson is the greatest man to have ever walked the earth. Humanity has never known a kinder and gentler friend father and husband he's never been anything but exemplary jesus looks up to danny masterson i mean i'm obviously exaggerating but the letter pretty much both of their letters pretty much had that flair i did a video about it yesterday so i'm not going to rehash the whole thing today um and but let me show you what i really want to talk to you guys about chrissy car nell Bixler is absolutely wiping the floor with Danny Masterson. If you guys are not yet following Chrissy, uh, her name is Chrissy. Car well, you can see Chrissy Carnell Bixler um, right there. And uh, but on on Instagram, you can see Chrissy Bixler. If you're not yet following her, run, don't walk over to Instagram and give Chrissy a follow. Um, to see what kind of truth bombs she's posting over there. Now, a lot of what she's been posting is on her Instagram stories, which are, it's a very specific format. And those stories expire, you know, from the platform after 24 hours. Now, some people have been taking her stories and compiling them into like consolidated videos, uh, which for my purposes are much easier to share. Uh, one such person on Twitter who I saw published one of these videos is uh, Lauren Rock on Twitter. And let me show you a bit of what she's got here. Chrissy Carnell Bixler, one of Danny Masterson's victims. That's right, guys. Uh, Chrissy Bixler is Jane Doe 3, which is totally okay for everybody to know at this point. Uh, Chrissy Carnell Bixler, one of Danny Masterson's victims, slammed Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis. Dear Ashton, I know the secrets your role model keeps for you. One that would end you. Ones that would end you. Did you forget I was there? You were on speakerphone that night. You called Danny. On February 21st, 2001, I heard everything. I heard the plan. In my opinion, you're just as sick as your mentor. Dear Mila, I pray you begin to process what you experienced as a child on that set. Your old interviews are very telling. I encourage everyone to watch them and decide for yourself what you hear and see. Do so before they get scrubbed from the internet. I also know that happened. Wait, I also know what happened in Toronto and after. Question, if that's what you view as a normal relationship with a big brother figure, then I feel very sad for you. And I hope you consider getting into therapy. You all must forget I was there the whole time. Those first five years of that 70s show, I remember everything. Um, for And there's a video here that I'm going to share, but in a moment. Um, for those who don't know, um, Chrissy, Jane Doe 3, was Danny Masterson's girlfriend, live-in girlfriend for like six years. Um, Dan, uh, Danny got Chrissy into Scientology. Um, a, a lot of Chrissy's testimony on the stand was some really heartbreaking stuff, aside from the attacks, of course, about what Chrissy being introduced by Danny to Scientology, um, the effects that that had on her and her relationships with her family and her friends. And she wasn't allowed to have any friends outside of Danny's friends, outside of Scientology. She wasn't allowed to work anymore. Chrissy was a very successful model. Um, <clears throat> okay, so let's go back to this real quick. So uh, the fact that she says, I was there that night when you called Danny on February 21st, 2001. Uh-oh, what is she talking about? Well, let me, let me show you guys. This was February. So what is that? Seven months ago, there's a video that I published on my channel uh, that the Internet has rediscovered overnight. I woke up to uh, discover that this video has been going crazy the last, you know, 12, 18 hours. Ashton Kutcher's lies allowed a murderer to kill again. I've linked to this video in the description down below. 
I've linked to Chrissy's Instagram in the description down below. And this incident here, for those of you who may not know, Ashton Kutcher had a girlfriend who it turned out was killed by a serial killer, which is some crazy words to hear anybody say. And you might go, holy shit, that's, that's, I feel horrible for Ashton to have had experienced such a thing. Like that makes him more sympathetic. Ashton Kutcher showed up for, to pick his girlfriend up for a date. Um, may, maybe they weren't officially boyfriend, girlfriend. They were dating. He goes to pick her up. He goes inside. He sees this girl lying dead on the floor, having been murdered blood all over the floor. Um, any normal person would have called the police. Um, Ashton Kutcher did not. Ashton Kutcher called his team, uh, got some advice from not only members of his team, but I, th I believe even the creator of that 70s show. I believe. Um, he called Danny Masterson while Chrissy was right next to Danny and on speakerphone. And essentially... Ashton Kutcher decided it would be detrimental to his, for, to his career to have his name so closely associated with having dis, uh, with, with, with a death, a murder, a dead body, a, a girl he was dating. So Ashton, while he knew this woman was young woman was lying dead, murdered in a pool of her own blood on her floor of her house, instead of calling the authorities, went to the party that the two of them were supposed to go to together and um, left it for whoever the next person was that discovered the body, left it, kick that can down the road. Whoever the next person is that discovers this body, let's have them be the one who calls the police. Let's have them be the one who gets interrogated. Let's have them be the one whose name appears in all the newspapers. Because God forbid Ashton Kutcher's budding career wouldn't be able to survive such a scandal. Now, guys, if you ask me now, it's, I don't want to look at this point. I'm arm, armchair quarterbacking something that happened 23 years ago. That's not a scandal that would hurt a career. I mean, if we just want to talk about crisis management, I mean, this is just my lowly opinion. What do I know, guys? I grew up in a cult. But having discovered your girlfriend's body is not a scandal that hurts your career. I mean, OK, if people are going to accuse you of being the murderer, yes. But that's crazy. That's crazy. Oh, my God. They're going to accuse me of being the murderer. I don't know. Is there any evidence there linking you to the murder? By the way, I'm not saying he had anything to do with the death. In fact, I am uh, I can say that I 100% believe he was not. But here's the thing. They didn't catch that killer right away. And that killer killed again. And you're not going to be able to convince me that that murder having been reported a day earlier than it was, you're not going to be able to convince me that they would have had a better chance of catching that murderer before he killed again if Ashton had reported what he found when he found it instead of worrying about Ashton first. You're not going to be able to convince me that Ashton is not at least partly responsible for that murderer having the opportunity to kill again. Um, the killer was eventually caught, but not after he killed more than one other woman. And, um, and it makes me wonder if this is actually part of, it makes me wonder, oh, oh and, and Ashton lied to the police about the whole thing. He lied to the police about having entered the house. He did enter the house. He did see the body. He did see the blood. He lied to the police about all of that. Okay. It makes me wonder if this type of blackmail that the Mastersons have on Ashton and other people have on Ashton, um, is why Ashton submitted the letter to the court in the first place. Now, we know that Ashton didn't understand the letters were going to be made public. We understand that he thought they were going to be for the judge only. But even still, even still, the le like I said, the letters were so effusive. They were so over the top. They were, they were so, no one's ever met anyone as nice as Danny Masterson. You have to wonder if the reason Ashton and Mila were willing to put those words to paper is because they know the kind of blackmail the Mastersons and other people in the Masterson crowd have on Ashton and Mila. All right, let's go back to this. Um, by the way, I do want to also show everyone Nisha Trout is also being very active. Um, Nisha Trout is Jane Doe 2, 
And it's okay. It's okay to know that it's Nisha at this point. She also has an Instagram. Please run. Don't walk over to Twitter and Instagram and, um, and follow Nisha as well. She is uh, letting the world know what she feels about all these things too. Um, okay. I do want to share with you. I've got to share it in a different way though, so that I can actually give you the audio. I want to share with you the video that Lauren Rock shared on Twitter. Bear with me for one moment. Okay. This should work. I'm going to go full screen. And here we go. Please let me know in the live chat if the sound is okay, guys, once I hit pray, play. And Busy here we go. Wire. She also has an album out. Um, she's going to be in Busy Wire. She also has an album out. Um, she's going to be in a movie called Cheaper by the Dozen. And she's one of the girls that we're all waiting for to turn 18, along with the Olsen twins. Any 15 year Getting the job, and uh, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, she was as hot as she was, you know. Like, 14. 14, she was even hotter. But I'm not allowed to say that. 14, when we started the show, I was like 19, right? Right. And they're like, okay, you guys are going to be making out in this scene. And I'm like thinking, like, wait, this is like slightly illegal, right? I was going to say, that's right? probably your first kiss ever, right? It was my first kiss. Why is someone bet you made with Danny about our first kiss? No, it wasn't the first <laughs> kiss. This was like the second or third kiss. It was the first. It was like the first week. No, it was not the first week. Whatever. Let me tell you what All happened. Right, what no, let no, me tell no, you what no, happened. No, no. Okay, yeah. so I've never kissed yeah. a guy. So okay. I was, I was so. I mean, you know, Ash was attractive, and yeah. I was a fourteen-year-old little girl, and I was extremely scared for my life. Sure. And then, he, he was very nice about it. He was like, "Oh, don't worry." So I was like, "Okay." Then Danny goes and goes, "Dude, I'll give you ten dollars if you French kiss her." Why wouldn't you stick my stick your tongue in my mouth or some? What? No, 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 no. Ten dollars. You're making it sound like it was like really bad. It, okay, Dan, we had a little side bet yeah, going. Yeah, like, which was it wasn't very as to whether or not you know, like you know, you're kissing on the show with boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. You would use tongue, right, Rosie? Like, I mean, you would use. At seventy show, and you're watching um, in the creek TV. Hi, I'm Nancy Kutcher, and I'm from that seventy show TV. No, that's a mean show too. Yeah. But and the reason I'm doing this is not because I think in the crease is good, but because Josh told me me and I would sit on my lap if I did. Okie dokie. Um by the way, I have seen some um some prominent people on different social media platforms um, incorrectly giving me credit as being the first person who reported on um, the thing with Ashton's girlfriend who, who was murdered um, and, and that I've reported on this before uh, Chrissy started talking about it to be crystal clear. All of the information in my video came from Chrissy. This was not two different sources. I don't, you know, okay. So it's been Chrissy all along. Chrissy who, and, and, and uh, I didn't say that in my video just to protect Chrissy. Uh, and, um, and that is the reason I was so confident in saying what I said in that video, because I knew the information was coming directly from someone who was actually there, who actually heard the conversation, who actually heard the plan being discussed on how to deceive the world and how to deceive the police and to leave this woman. God, how do they even know she was already dead? Like, how do they even know they weren't leaving someone there on the floor dying who could have been saved? The only way they could know that is for Ashton to have gotten close enough to be very sure. And how does anyone in that situation not immediately call the police? How does someone think about a TV show? You know, it's um, I, I can't I can't wrap my wits around it. Uh, there's another clip I want to share with you guys. There is. Uh, a creator on YouTube, one of the biggest creators out there, especially for the, the audience younger than me, uh, his name he uses on YouTube is he's known as Moist Critical. And uh, he's about 29 years old. And I want to share this with you because I want to use um, a clip from his video. He's doing a video about the Ashton Kutcher Mila Kunis fallout. 
I want to, this is an example of how this is being covered in popular culture for people who are younger than me. Like YouTube is a massive audience and it skews younger. Most of my audience is actually over the age of 40, but most of the audience on YouTube in general is under the age of 40. And those people get their information, their news, the world events through a handful of key sources. Moist Critical is like one of the kings of that hill. He's known as just someone who has kind of a no nonsense, no BS perspective of digesting and analyzing world events and news. And I wanted just to show you guys how I'm going to show you a three minute clip. Hang in there with me. I hope you know, I, I hope you I want to share this with you. A three minute clip of him discussing Mila and Ashton and, and what's occurred here. So again, I've got to share this a very specific way so that you can actually hear the audio. And here we go. So by the way, he's got 13 million subscribers. And, and even those numbers though, don't do it justice because his, his reach and his influence um, uh, with the under 40 crowd is hard to describe for people who don't fully understand how influential YouTube actually is. But all right, here we go, guys. And then it came out that Ashton Kutcher, Mila Kunis, and about 50 other people wrote letters to the judge of the sexual assault trial to just say nice things about Danny Masterson. I guess the idea was to try and hype him up as like, look at all these positive experiences we had with Danny Masterson. Inside Danny, there are two demons, a rapist and an incredible actor with a bright smile that could light up a room. And it's important that we don't overlook that second one. Let's focus on all these great experiences we had with Danny Masterson that we knew. You know, Mr. Hyde was a bad, a bad guy, but Dr. Jekyll, he was great. So, like, I guess the idea here was to try and get the judge to be a little bit more lenient or something, like to try and help Danny's case by just saying nice things about the Danny they knew. So an excerpt from Ashton Kutcher's letter says, Danny takes his job seriously. He is kind, courteous, and hardworking. He treated everyone from the grips to the teamsters to the actors to the caterers as equals. As a role model, Danny has consistently been an excellent one. A great role model to rapists, maybe. What the fuck is this? This is just an absolutely evil thing to say about somebody like this. What? How delusional can you be? He took his job seriously. He even said good work to one of the caterers. I'd never seen such a saint on the That 70s Show set. To look at a caterer and actually engage in small talk blew my mind. I'd never seen anyone so sweet. He was truly a benevolent angel. A great role model if you just ignore all of the, the rape stuff. Like, holy shit. What in the world? What in tarnation? And Mila Kunis called him an amazing friend, confidant, and above all, an outstanding older brother figure. His genuine concern for those around him and his commitment to leading by example make him an outstanding role model and friend. Yucky. Yucky. An older brother figure, and still, she's echoing the same thing. A great role model. He just got convicted of rape, and it's not like this is a case with like a lot of holes in it, and it was like some kind of fishy investigation or something. Like this is this is a pretty cut and dry case. The only reason it took three years is because there is a lot of uh, a lot of interesting stuff that may may or may not have been going on with Scientology being involved. I, I don't like to even mention that word because that's a very scary thing to even bring up. Mentioning Scientology is like mentioning Voldemort in the real world. But perhaps there were, you know, a, a few. A few Tom Riddle diary exchanges that led to some shady shit going on throughout this case, at least from what I've read so far. This isn't something where you would see all of the evidence, see the verdict, and start wiggling your finger like, mm, no, justice wasn't served here. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're part of Danny Masterson's team who's saying that they got it wrong and they plan to do everything they can to overturn it and all that shit. But, like, as someone who was a friend of him, you should see this and be like, oh, this is fucking revolting. Oh, J uh, Jiminy Christmas. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. I was friends with an absolute monster. And then not you, you would not go up to bat for them. Like, you wouldn't start speaking to the great character of Danny Masterson. There you go. That's what I wanted to show you guys. I mean, who would have ever thought that the sentencing of Danny Masterson would be what opened the door to the exposure of all the nastiness that Ashton Kutcher has been involved with and complicit with, a la 
the stuff Danny Masterson was up to. I got to tell you, Wilma Valderrama is in, in, is, is in this same conversation. And, um, but you'll know who didn't write a freaking letter defending the character of Danny Masterson. Wilmer Valderrama didn't. Maybe he realized that would be playing with fire. Maybe he, maybe they asked him to, and he's like, oh, you're telling me no one's going to see these letters? Yeah, I don't believe you. <laughs> Do you know? Do you know who else didn't submit a letter? And I thought she did in the beginning, but it turns out I was wrong. Laura Prepon did not submit a letter. We already know Topher Grace didn't submit a letter, but he knew what Danny was up to decades ago. But Wilmer really was also another one of these guys that was right in there with Danny. I mean, Wilmer, I knew a Sea Org member. I knew a Scientology Sea Org member who was sent to the RPF for sleeping with Wilmer. That's how, mu how, that's how much time Wilmer spent at the Scientology Celebrity Center, which is weird because by all reports, I'm told Wilmer was never a Scientologist. Maybe he just liked all those fine honeys that were hanging around the Celebrity Center because I, I can't figure it out. I swear to God, guys, a Sea Org member I knew was sent to the Scientology Sea Org prison camp for sleeping with Wilmer Valderrama. Now, that's not illegal. That just is, a, is an anecdote of how closely connected these science, uh, Danny's co-stars were to Danny and his favorite cult, Scientology. Um, but like I said, who would have guessed that this sentencing uh, would be what opened the door to um, the expose and the takedown of, of Ashton Kutcher if he had just not sent the letter? But you go, yeah, but why did he send the letter? Well, there's a lot of blackmail there. Ashton's been up to a lot of no good, you know, but, but sometimes it does seem like you can distill something down to just one moment, right? If you just hadn't sent the letter, if you just kept your mouth shut, none of this would be happening right now. Just like if Danny Masterson had just actually sincerely and genuinely apologized to Jane Doe one for what he did, we wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't be here today. Jane Doe one, we'll call her Jen because that's her name, but we won't say her last name. Um, and that's with her permission. <clears throat> Jen was still a Scientologist when she reported Danny to the police. And Jen has said that she would never have taken that unprecedented step of reporting another Scientologist to the police. Because remember, guys, that's forbidden in Scientology. She would never have reported Danny to the police if he had just said, I'm sorry. He continued to troll her and re-abuse her and re-victimize her and use her pain against her. And even the Scientology authorities, there was one woman, and, 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 and Jane Doe once spoke about this in her victim's impact statement. There was a moment where even Scientology authorities, even Alfredi Johnson, even, uh, even uh, the Office of Special Affairs person, um, Kirsten, oh my God, I can't believe I'm blanking on her name. Oh my God. K Kirsten, 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 Kirsten Catano brought Dan, Dan, cause Danny had told the Scientology officials, you know, if, if, if Jen would just tell me to my face exactly how this has hurt her, I think it would help me understand. And so they, they organized this summit, this meeting in a conference room. And, uh, and Danny just wanted, Danny just wanted to use this as an opportunity to re-victimize Jen and to sort of get off on seeing the pain that it caused her to recount these events. And he just kept making jokes and making jokes and making jokes to the point where the Scientology officials even said, okay, that's it. That's enough. That's enough. We're not doing this anymore. And it was Danny's refusal to go, you know what? I'm really fucking sorry. You're right. That was wrong. You're right. If he had done that, we wouldn't be here today. <sighs> because one of the reason, uh, none of the Jane, none of the Jane Doe's knew about each other. All the Jane Doe's thought they were Danny's only victim. And it, uh, the fact that Jane Doe won, that Jen was pushed to such a length that she sued Danny, that she filed criminal complaints against him. The fact that she was pushed to those lengths by Danny's refusal to take any responsibility or show any remorse or to apologize is the only reason many, many years later, Jane Doe three, Chrissy was able to learn of the existence of Jane Doe one. If Jane Doe One had not been pushed to those lengths, there would have been nothing for Chrissy to learn about all those years later, which means the Jane Doe's would never have been able to together. I mean, uh, uh, not so. So the only reason Danny was able to be prosecuted for these crimes successfully after so many years had passed is because 
charges for, for these multiple women were able to be brought at the same time. The only re uh, if these if 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 either one of these cases were to be tried individually, it would have been past the statute of limitations. And I don't want to get into all the legalese for why, but it has to do with the fact that when you a, a crime that has as a potential penalty life in prison doesn't have a statute of limitations and a single assault, the nature of which we're talking about here, doesn't have a potential sentence of life. But multiple assaults together do have a potential sentence of life. That's why there was no statute of limitations problem with this case. In other words, if the Jane Doe's never found out about each other, there never would have even been a possibility of bringing this case and Danny Masterson wouldn't be in prison right now. In other words, if Danny Masterson had just said, I'm sorry to the women when he was confronted with the Scientology authorities about what he did, we wouldn't be here today. Amazing to think, right? Amazing to think. Just like if Ashton Kutcher just hadn't sent that letter, we would not be here today talking about what we're here talking about today. It really is incredible to consider. Um, let me see. You know what? There's something else I was going to say, but I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that. All right, guys, I'm going to tackle the super chats real quick here. <clears throat> and then we'll call, call it a wrap on this video. Dave Owens, Ashton never thought that letter would be public. I believe you are correct. Chrissy out here dropping bombs. Yeah, she is carpet bombing Ashton and crew. Kate Gill, Phil Collins in the air tonight for the Jane Doe's. <laughs> I love it. Greg Candy, getting to watch an awful cult crumble in real time with your expert coverage and commentary is my new favorite reason to go on YouTube. Thank you, Greg. That's very kind of you. Seeker 0628, can't sell your soul and not expect it to come back to bite you and not expect it to come back and bite you. Absolutely. Michelle Asbel, so as Bell, Michelle Asbel. So yesterday you said Wilmer Valderrama was just as bad as Ashton and Danny. Can you please explain that? Michelle, um, if I actually had honest to God details and specifics that would justify doing a video or talking about it responsibly, I would. All I can tell you is that um, when I get information from people that I trust and that I know, know, I'm very comfortable relaying that information. So, um, when I when I can discuss this responsibly, I will. But um, thank you for thank you for the question, Michelle. Uh, leaving Scientology by Louis Repetto. Ashton popularizing child grooming to perverts. Yeah, exactly. Bella Lada, this is sickening. I should not have eaten lunch. Well, my heart goes out to you. <laughs> uh, Luce, uh, Larry B, I sent Moist your clip yesterday. Well, that's very kind of you. Thank you, Larry. Steve Britton, if Topher Grace knew what was going on and didn't report it, then we shouldn't let him off the hook. Yeah, and Steve, I got to be honest. Um, I, I should probably be careful saying that Topher. I do not have any reason to believe that Topher Grace knew exactly what Danny was up to. I just think Topher Grace knew that Danny was a scumbag and a slime ball. And let's be honest, everyone on that set knew what was happening to Mila Kunis. I mean, she was 14 years old. I've heard some people say she was actually 13 lying about being 14. I think she was 14 lying about being 18. So, I mean, everyone on the set at least knew that. So the truth is Topher was not in Danny's friend group. They didn't hang out. So the, there's no reason to believe that Topher, like he did not like Danny. He did not hang out with Danny. So there's no actual reason to believe he knew the exact details of what was going on. So I should be clear about that. Thank you, Stephen. Judy Bishop, why did 70s show parents vouch for him? What the hell? I know, right? So the actors who played Danny's parents on that 70s show both submitted similar character letters. And don't worry. I mean, Ashton's just getting the brunt of the exposure right now because he's the biggest star. I, I, I got to tell you, though, I consider Giovanni Ribisi to be a bigger star than Ashton Kutcher. And Giovanni Ribisi is also a Scientologist. Giovanni Ribisi submitted letters, as did every other member of the Ribisi family. I'll be doing videos about Giovanni Ribisi very, very soon. Um, but yeah, why, why his TV parents submitted letters? Psh, who knows? Uh, Mama83, Bree didn't send a letter? Shocking, kind of. That's right. Guys, I meant to... Um, do a letter. Oh, oh, in my video yesterday, I meant to read a list of people who did not submit letters for Danny Masterson, even though they know exact that they're just as close to Danny as anybody. Bree Schaefer did not write a letter. Luke Watson, no letter. Ben Schulman, no letter. Aubrey Watson, no letter. Paige Dorian, no letter. Seems like none of these people were willing to write, write a letter and lie through their teeth, but 
I, I would have guessed that the people who did write letters wouldn't have been willing to write, write a letter and, and lie through their teeth. So maybe Bree Schaefer, Luke Watson, Ben Schulman, Aubrey Watson, Paige Dorian, maybe they knew that writing a letter vouching for Danny's character would be flying a little too close to the sun, knowing that you got your own baggage. Maybe they were just smart enough to be like, mm -mm, no, thank you. We don't need that kind of attention. Joni Cummings, um, Danny Masterson is Voldemort and the Sea Org and Osa are Death Eaters. We need to take them down. Danny Masterson. Oh, David Miscavige is Voldemort. The Sea Org and Osa are Death Eaters. We need to take them down. Danny Masterson is a mini Voldemort. Well, there you go. Cat ACDC fan down the rabbit hole and Jumpsuit Pablo are podcasts with two good perspectives. Great seeing non ex Scientology sites picking this up. We'll have to check that out. Thank you. Shelly Swanson, thankfully, this will follow Mila and Ashton for the rest of their careers. I agree with that. Christine Nelson, thank you for all you do to inform us, Aaron. Well, thank you, Christine. It's my pleasure. Devin Laura, all I can think about is all the other Scientology members who've done these things to people and we need to expose them. Yes. Yes, indeed. Brie Hanna, 25. Wilmer is going to be super careful with everything about Danny right now. Sweet NCIS gig going on. Oh, wow. Is Wilmer on NCIS? I don't watch TV, so I wouldn't know. He cannot afford to lose that. Well, that would explain why he didn't write a letter. <laughs> that would definitely explain it. Arnie Van Halen. I used to love that 70s show. What a shit show full of creeps. I know, right? Crazy. The Lifeboat. Tommy Scoville. The Janes proving their her heroism yet again. Absolutely. Absolutely. Rhiannon Fordyce, happily in the 40 plus set that loves some, an oh, happily in the 40 plus set that loves some anti Scientology coverage by all of SPTV and SPTV adjacent. Well, glad to have you, Rhiannon. Glad to have you. Anya D. Danny is a diehard Scientologist. Doesn't that mean he has to associate with non SPs? Why was Ashton Kutcher okay? I'm a little confused. I'm a little confused. Um, diehard Scientologists can associate with non-Scientologists. They just can't associate with suppressive persons. Now, maybe you're thinking that anyone who's not a Scientologist is an SP, but that's not what SP means in Scientology. Uh, in Scientology, an SP is basically a former Scientologist who has said anything negative about Scientology. But um, no, Ashton Kutcher is exactly who Scientologists would want to hang out with. They want to safe point him. They want to ally him. They want him to be a friend. Um, so yeah, he was, he was totally okay to hang out with the carousel delirium for the Jane Doe's and the victims not yet heard. Well, thank you, Lindsay G. I sent an email to a judge concerning a defendant as I have a grave concerns about his past and future behavior. I was scolded and told it was inappropriate to directly contact a judge. Why is it okay for them? Oh, you must be referring to these letters. So these letters were not sent directly to the judge. And also, by the way, uh, these aren't these were letters specifically solicited for the sentencing. So these are not letters that were sent to the judge during during the trial. So, um, Lindsay, I'm guessing from just the sound of your comment that you sent a letter to a judge regarding um, someone who was on trial because that's really when they're a defendant. You're not a defendant after you're convicted. And uh, and it was actually the attorneys, the defense attorneys themselves who solicited these letters. And it is the attorneys who submitted the letters to the court in their motion that they filed for their position on sentencing. So it's essentially a motion file asking the judge to sentence him to concurrent sentences instead of consecutive sentences. And it's totally normal. And the judge accepted the letters attached uh, to, to the, the motion that the attorney submitted. So that's the answer to that one. Uh, Katie did it. Uh, Natalie lawyer chick was talking about this a minute ago. Uh, we saw you on two X speed. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I think it's great that so many, so many um, channels and platforms and programs are, are covering this. It's amazing. Uh, Brianna 25 Wilmer was hired to replace Michael Weatherly appropriate casting, but yes, he's been on it for several years. Well, good for him. Jack Stevens. They were not Danny's parents. They were Topher's parents. Oh my God. You're right. I've been saying it wrong for the last two days. Oh my God. You're totally right. I called him um, Danny's TV mommy and TV daddy. It shows you how little I watch that show. You're totally right. They were Topher's parents in the show. Ooh, blown for good. Mark Headley. I suspect the Danny train may have quite a few cars on it. Scientology is going to be fighting and kicking the whole trip. Yeah, absolutely. Rhiannon Fordyce. Whoa, you pronounced both my names correctly. Thank you. Well, I'm getting better, Rhiannon. I'm getting much better. And I have many friends named Rhiannon, so I'm familiar with the name. 
Red Tar for me. Cheers to the Jane Doe's super women. Thanks, Aaron. And Red Tar for me, thank you for um uh, Red Tar for me did this. <laughs> I got a little mini me now. <laughs> thank you for that. Lauren Ziegler. Did you see Will Masterson saying, I am not a Scientologist? No, I haven't even read all the letters. I haven't read all the letters and I haven't read Will's letter, but he actually said that. That's crazy. I might have to cover that in its own video. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me this afternoon. Hey, if you're one of the uh, 11,000 people watching live, do me a favor, hit that like button real quick. Go on, go on, do it. it it's fast, it's easy, it's free, and it actually helps, believe it or not, guys. Um, much more to come today. Stay tuned. Hit that notification bell, maybe. Hit that subscribe button, maybe. But uh, anyway, as always, guys, thank you to everyone who watches until the very end, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see an a different one of my videos. Uh, oh, you can't see my love. Then you could click.